Hi, welcome or welcome back to the Svenny Knits Knitting channel. My name is Svenja, I am your host, and today I'm actually coming to you from a different location than my first few episodes. I am currently in what we call the den in our house, which is essentially um, kind of like a half hangout area. Um, there's a couch over on this side with a TV um, on this back wall here, and then this corner here is pretty much my knitting space. Um, as you can see, I kind of store my yarn in these little cubbies here. I have tools. Um, there's actually a desk right in front of me here, which is the reason I am up here is because when I was watching my videos back, I realized that I was leaving out a lot of information that I was initially intending to um, include in these videos. Uh, things like uh, details with like like patterns and yarns and that kind of thing. So I figured if I have a desk in front of me, the computer is actually where you are, <laughs> technically. Um, so I have a little, uh, you know, a few notes to be able to um, refer to and hopefully be able to um, include a little bit more information uh, going forward. So with that being said, let's get to it. So I have a lot of fun things to share with you today. First is my finished object, which I am clearly wearing here, and I'll talk about in just a second. Um, and then later in the video, I would love to share a really fun yarn adventure that I went on with my good friend, Nick. Um, we essentially did like a mini yarn crawl uh, around where we live. So um, I will hope to uh, include some video clips of these yarn stores that we went to and share uh, some of the yarn that I picked up there. So we'll start with my sweater here. This is the sweater number 11 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And as you can see, it's a uh, like a chunky turtleneck um, bulky weight sweater. Um, there's ribbing on both the uh, sleeve cuff here as well as on the bottom and I hope that I can insert some pictures here that I plan on taking later today just to give you a better, better idea of how it's fitting. So um, this is a pattern that I talked about um, in depth in my fall um, like knitting plans video and I was really hoping to get this done um, so I could wear it as the weather changed and <laughs> it's like 70 degrees today and it's supposed to be that warm all weekend so not ideal weather for chunky knits yet but um, it's definitely gotten some wear since I finished it a few weeks ago. So this is a pattern like I said by my favorite things knitwear and I don't know much about this designer um, but she has pretty popular uh, designs all over like Instagram. Um, she has her own website as well as patterns on Ravelry and this is a pattern that I did buy through her website so it was a PDF that went to my email. And um, like I said, it is a bulky weight sweater um, and it calls for a strand of worsted weight yarn held together with a mohair. And my choice, I actually had some leftover, um, so I thought I'd share it with you here. So um, I used this combo here and it's all stash yarn, so I'm really happy to have used uh, quite a bit of yarn that had been sitting kind of around for a couple of years. So um, the worsted weight yarn here is Simply Wool Worsted, I believe in the color um, Winkle by Knit Picks. And then this white here is a Lace Weight Mohair by Jedifra. I mess up that name all the time, so if anyone knows how to actually say this, please leave it in a comment. That would be really helpful. Um, and I held these two together, and clearly it's made um, kind of a heathered, a heathered effect. I'll try to show this up a little bit closer. Um, so you can definitely see some variation between the worsted weight yarn as well as the mohair, which I love. I love that it's, you know, a little bit more interesting if you look at it closely and then far away, it's just kind of a, a basic neutral. And um, I really liked the design of the sweater. It uh, started, I believe, in the back and you kind of like knit um, the shoulders, shape the shoulders, um, and then you like pick up around the front uh, and... Um, then start knitting in the round, I think, and then you add, you add the neckline, um, you pick up stitches and add the neckline after, and the shoulders are a drop shoulder, as you can see. Uh, pretty easy to follow the pattern. It was 
fairly straightforward. Um, it was a really enjoyable knit. I really have no complaints there. Um, I think it was a clear um, like outline of how the sweater was going to be constructed. I think it was thoughtful in the sense that um, there were a few recommendations if you wanted to like add the length, add more length onto it. Um, the, I did make a few modifications. Um, one being is I actually shortened the, um, neck, the, what's it called? Neck, neck band, neck band, turtleneck, I guess. Um, so I think I, it was only by like a centimeter or so. I just don't love turtlenecks that like go up to my jawline. I just feel like they're, I don't know, they're too, you know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, this does not kind of drape like the pattern um, or like many sample knits do. Um, but I really like it. It fits um, really well. And then I did, um, after doing the decreases um, in the arms, I did add quite a bit of stockinette to lengthen the sleeves. And I'm not really sure what that was about. I usually don't have to lengthen the arms that much but as you can see they're kind of like bracelet length sleeves and I was not very aggressive blocking this and I was just really nervous that the sleeves were going to be too oversized which I'm really happy with the fit so far I think next time I do block it I will try to stretch the um the sleeves a bit to make it a little bit longer um it's a little unconventional for me to stand up right now I'm in a chair that I got at Goodwill for like three dollars a long time ago and it's like it's ready to break in half and it's really really squeaky I don't know if you can hear that but anyways I hope to insert some pictures so you can get a better idea of the rest of the body and then the ribbing at the end um, and then the last modification I made was um, I did not do the tubular bind off which the pattern calls for I I will be really honest, I got super lazy at the end of this knit. Um, I just did not have the energy to tubular bind off like um, everything on this. I just, yeah, I'm, I am a big fan of tubular bind off, um, mostly in like, you know, a wool uh, yarn, not mohair necessarily, because if you have to undo it um, to stretch it out a little bit, because I tend to, to bind off really tightly, it's just kind of a disaster. So I got a little lazy. It probably would have looked a little bit more professional had I used the tubular bind off, but I'm really happy with how it fits. I actually don't mind just a very basic, like um, knit one, purl one bind off with, I go up like two or three needle sizes to make sure it's really loose. So I really don't mind it. I feel like it has um, really good stretch still um, without it being, uh, I guess like too, I don't know, too tight. So I'm happy with the sweater. Um, I will say that I was quite um, shocked when I opened up the pattern and saw that there were only three sizes available. It's literally size one, two, and three, I believe. Maybe there's a fourth, I don't know. I do recall a lot of people having issues with this designer having li limited size um, options for her patterns, which, um, is obviously a hot topic in the knitting community right now. That being said, I would not um, recommend this pattern to the masses because it's not inclusive. Um, it, you know, it doesn't take into consideration that there are a lot more body sizes and shapes out there. So um, I would unfortunately not recommend this pattern for um, that reason. However, I do... Um, I have read a little bit um, and this is just through like social media and whatnot so please take this with a grain of salt. Um, I believe this designer is making efforts to increase the sizes available for some of her patterns. So I just want to be really clear that I don't intend to support designers or patterns that don't take into consideration size inclusivity and I think it's an important discussion that we keep going, um, but I do think that there is room for growth and improvement. So I do support that. Um, and I think if we all make a conscious effort to do that, the culture will definitely change. 
um, and as someone who's putting my opinions um, and advice and experience out into the the world, I want to make sure that my um, my values and my morals are pretty clear um, when it comes to these kind of matters. Alrighty, moving on to whips. I don't have a lot of whips actually. I did start gift knitting a few things, which obviously I can't show with you because I think some of my family does watch. Um, but I hope to record an episode at some point um, going through what I'm knitting, who I'm knitting for, and um, kind of my process when it comes to making things for the holidays. So I hope to get that recorded at some point. Um, I still have quite a bit of um, planning to do. It is only early November, but if you're a knitter and you knit things for gifts, then you know that like this is prime time to get started um, and you feel behind like even thinking about it. Um, so I will check back with you soon about that and I would love to hear what you guys are knitting um, for friends and family. I'm always up for um, different like pattern ideas um, as good gifts because I always I always feel like I get a little stuck on what to knit people. I know what I love, um, but I just, you know, you know how it is. So my first whip, you've seen it before. Um, this is the basic um, cabled cardigan by Irene Lynn. And I made a bit of progress um, since the last time I showed this. This is like really not showing up well on the camera. I think it's the lighting and maybe the yarn. Um, so this is a cabled cardigan. This is actually the back. This is the front. It's knit um, back and forth um, and it's a heavily cabled design as you can kind of see here. Uh, it is so fun to knit. I am like having a blast with these cables. Um, it's coming together really nicely and if you watch my first video you probably would have heard about this like yarn um, uh, a lot disaster I guess we'll call it um, I used I knit this pattern before essentially and um, I accidentally used a different lot um, of the yarn like right in the middle of the darn thing and didn't realize it until I was pretty much done with the body and it bothered me so much that I actually unraveled the yarn and guess what it's actually the yarn that I used for this sweater so I was able to reuse it um, which was great but um, uh, yeah, a lesson learned and something I hope to never do again. Um, so I am using Lucky Tweed. Uh, also, a few of you mentioned that I um, should change my video to be mirror on like a mirror setting so you can actually read the labels. So I don't think I did that and I actually don't know how to do that. Um, maybe I can switch it like after I film this. But if you can't read this, I'm really sorry. I'll, I'll try to figure it out. But anyways, this is Lucky Tweed. Um, it's a air and weight yarn um, made by Kelborn Woolens, which is a pretty well-known brand. Um, it is 100% merino wool. Um, one skein is 210 yards. Um, it is a very tweedy yarn. You can kind of see like flecks of um, brown and beige and um, black, even dark gray. And it's pretty soft for being a like rustic woolen spun yarn um, as you can see here it is in the cake um, and it's a pretty um, robust yarn so it actually hasn't um, even with like lots of cabling it hasn't um, broke at all it's been pretty durable I really hope that this holds up nicely um, I was intending this cardigan to be something that was more of like a light jacket um, and or like something to like routinely throw over um, even in the house when it's cold um, so I do have quite a bit of yarn I the cables obviously take up a lot a lot of knitting a lot of yardage um, but my plan is I'm very close to s splitting for the sleeves um, my plan is to essentially split for the sleeves knit a little bit more of the body and then I'll probably go back to the sleeves and finish the sleeves completely and um, that way I know that um, whatever yarn I have left I can kind of use up to the very last um, bit of it to knit the body fully. Uh, I don't really love having a lot of yarn left over from projects. I don't typically make a lot of like little scrap projects 
so it ends up sitting around. Um, so I usually use this technique, um, meaning like knit the sleeves first, then go back to the body um, to essentially avoid using or under utilizing the yardage that I have. So that's the game plan there. I hope to make a little bit more progress um, maybe this next week. I am on call this weekend, so probably won't get a lot of knitting done. Um, but I'm really enjoying that project so far. So far, so good. No lot disasters there, which is great. Um, and like I said, I don't really have, I'm looking over here because now that I have a desk, I can like spread everything out and see what I'm doing. Alrighty, moving on. I thought it'd be really fun to share with you guys a recent yarn adventure that my friend Nick and I went on uh, a few weekends ago. So Nick is a friend of mine that I met through a colleague at work. He is also a nurse and a knitter, which is a great combo. But it turns out we actually have way more in common than that. So he is so much fun to spend time with and our relationship has really just blossomed over the last few years. Um, so he was the perfect person to ask if uh, he wanted to go on a little yarn crawl um, with me. Um, so we basically designed this trip where we would start in southern Maine, where we both live, and end up in um, a, like a New Hampshire area, um, with our final destination being... Um, hi, Winnie. Uh, our final destination being Harrisville Designs, which is a mill... Um, out in Harrisville, New Hampshire, and it's um, the place where uh, pretty well-known yarns like um, Brooklyn Tweed, uh, Peace Fleece, that sort of thing, I'm blanking on a few of, of the other names, um, where they are milled. Um, we actually didn't make it out that far. Um, we kind of got caught up in a few of the other yarn shops. We had lunch, and I uh, kind of bagged out a little bit because <laughs> there's a lot of driving involved. So uh, anyways, we do plan on making round two, which Nick, I know he's watching, so be ready. Um, so we, uh, I did take some video clips of these places and I'll try to insert them um, so you can get an idea of where we were. So if you have any, any interest and you're in the area, I would definitely recommend all three of these places we ended up um, making it to. So, okay, so the first place that we went was um, the Yarn Cellar in York, Maine. So the first place that we went to was the Yarn Cellar in York, Maine. And I was actually very surprised. Um, this was a beautiful store, kind of a standalone building on a main road, and it had a really wide selection of beautiful yarns, um, some hand spun, um, some local stuff. Um, it had a lot of Noro, uh, some great like tools and um, lots of notions and accessories. I could have bought way more than I did. Um, everyone was really nice and helpful um, without kind of being like on your back asking you a million questions of what you're looking for. Um, we, were, we did have a few projects in mind that we were shopping for, but mostly just browsing and kind of checking out the different selections and getting a feel for the different stores as this was a new place for both of us. We'd never been there before. So I did, um, I did try to buy something at every store. Um, you know, I do love supporting local shops if I can. Um, that being said, like I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm really trying to work for my stash, which is not working well for me. But um, then again, you only live once, right? So I bought um, two skeins of uh, ooh, blue sky fibers. Um, they're worsted. Uh, gosh, I'm blanking. Woolstock. Woolstock worsted. Um, so these are uh, 50 gram skeins um, in the color gray harbor. And I bought these as accent colors to um, a, another uh yarn, sorry, another few skeins that I have of this col of this yarn in a different color um, because I plan on making a color work sweater with this. So this was really just a beautiful fit. Um, it was very convenient to have um, the other yarns actually in store um, for me to compare colors to. Oftentimes if I'm like picking out a contrast color and 
I don't have the main color on me. It's hard to, you should really have that on hand when you're picking out yarn. So I was really thankful to have that there. And I just love this company. I think this yarn is so soft and um, like buttery smooth. I'm just really excited to work with this um, and do some color work, which I haven't done color work in a really long time and I'm craving it. I just want a little bit more, uh, more color in my life right now. So um, there's that. So that was the yarn seller in York, Maine. And then the next place we went to was Smitten Yarns, and that was in Rochester, New Hampshire, which is a cute little town. Um, and Smitten Yarns is probably the cutest yarn shop I've also been to. Uh, it is a mother-daughter run shop, and it is in this like old Victorian house um, that has like beautiful ornate uh, decorations, and there's like a stained glass window. Um, and just really thoughtfully designed um, in terms of like the aesthetic. Um, it really appealed to me. Um, it felt really homey. Um, I forget their names now, which is a bummer, but um, the two owners were just so lovely. They were helpful. They were excited about yarn. Um, we told them about our yarn crawl and uh, they recommended some other yarn shops in the area, which is really nice to see that, you know, other business were, businesses were supporting each other. Um, unfortunately, I didn't buy anything. Um, actually, no, I did, I did, I did. I can't believe I forgot. That's where I found this yarn. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wanted to buy everything. I like waffled around. They had, um, gosh, they had um, Sandus Garn, they had, um, Jameson and Smith, which those were two yarns that I actually haven't felt in person, which was so nice because you know how it is. Like you have to touch yarn to, um, to know if you want to work with it. And I almost felt that there were too many options there and I just didn't have a great project in mind, um, for either of those yarn companies. Um, but, uh, I did find this and I can't believe I forgot. It's so sad. So this yarn here appealed to me um, from the from far away actually I just loved this shade I've been looking for like an orangey brown kind of like a an autumnal shade um, it was just perfect for like the fall I think this is just such a great shade I actually have never knit with a brown yarn before I've knit with like beige and gray and that sort of thing but something like deep and rich like this it's just um, something that is kind of a newer interest of mine. So this yarn here is West Yorkshire Spinners and it's called Fleece and it's a DK weight blue Leicester yarn, blue faced Leicester. I don't know if I'm actually saying that right, pronouncing it, but it's a type of sheep. I believe that the, that the wool is um, from um, and it is from Britain. And it is, um, like I said, a DK weight. It, these hanks are hanks, skeins, whatever you want to call it. Um, it they're 100 grams each, and they have 246 yards in each of them. And I did get four of these. I actually only had four in stock, which um, ideally I would have loved to buy a fifth to make somewhere around like 1,200, um, or no, it's just a little bit more than 1,000 um somewhere around there 1100 I don't know I'm not great with math on the spot but a sweater quantities worth of yarn um, but unfortunately they didn't have it so I went ahead and bought four of these which will be enough for a sweater um, if I be mindful about kind of length and how I'm using the yarn so you know I wouldn't choose something like cabled necessarily because I think I'd probably run out of yarn but maybe like a simple cardigan or like um like a raglan maybe I can do like bracelet length sleeves or a little bit cropped in the body um and that way I can use like you guys know now like every last bit of yarn I would love to do this um with this yarn so if you have any pattern recommendations here I'm a little anxious to cast it on and try it out um, it is like so soft, like I've never felt this type of yarn um, be so soft. And I think that's kind of what their, what their, um, their reputation is. So 
Um, highly recommend you check this out. The colors that they have available are just so gorgeous too. There was a like a turquoise and a purple. Not totally my colors, not something I would probably knit in entire sweaters. Um, in an entire color sweater. Um, but if you're into that, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous and really, really soft yarn. So I love that. I loved Smitten Yarns. I thought it was the cutest store ever. I really hope I can find a way to get the video playing um, here so you can get a little peek of the store. Um, it was uh, also an interesting tidbit that we learned that um, this store carries um, a ton of vintage buttons. I think they like bought out a, a older button store that was going out of business and um, one of the, I believe the mother of the, the owner um, was helping another woman with a cardigan and choices for buttons and she was just bringing down like shoe boxes and shoe boxes of all these old vintage buttons which was so cool. So if you're ever in the area um, Smitten Yarns in Rochester, New Hampshire, you have to check them out. So from there, we intended to go down to Harrisville, um, but we were recommended to stop at Spinning Yarns in Dover, New Hampshire, which is a um, smaller yarn store right in downtown Dover, which is a really cute little place. Um, lots of little restaurants and shops and that kind of thing. So we ended up going there, um, which it was a smaller yarn store, but a great selection, um, tons of natural light. So like a really good place to actually um, shop for like colors and um, like, you know, see see the yarn um, in good lighting, which is often a problem I think in many yarn stores is you're looking at it in like a dark corner and you don't actually see the true color until you're like out in the, the daylight. So if you're ever shopping for yarn, make sure you go bring that yarn like over to a window. Um, even if you like need to see a mirror and see how it's going to be with your skin tone, like make the extra effort because I've definitely walked out of places before um, with, you know, a not a great assessment of the yarn color and been surprised either in good ways or bad ways. So there's a tip for you for, for today. So anyways, great lighting in Spinning Yarns in Dover. Um, they had a beautiful selection of yarn too, a little bit smaller, um, not so many like um, like your very basic acrylic yarns um, or um, kind of um, like uh, more affordable options, I guess, like a little bit higher quality specialty yarns. Um, but lovely owner, he was there knitting, um, asked or answered all of our questions. Um, just a nice experience and um, some place I would definitely go visit again. Alrighty, so to wrap things up, I am really happy to be here with you guys. I uh, have been really busy with work um, over the last couple weeks. It's just been kind of a crazy whirlwind. Um, and then there was like Halloween weekend where we spent um, some time with family. So I really hope to be, you know, putting out some more podcasts, um, but unfortunately my time doesn't allow me to be on here as much as I'd like. Um, but that being said, thank you so much for your support and for subscribing or leaving kind comments. It really means a lot to me. Um, I hope to uh, film an episode, like I said, about um, some holiday knitting as well as some um, exciting like holiday inspired knitting, I guess. Um, so if you're into that, let me know. Um, tell me how things are going at home for you as the weather changes from fall to like early winter and we head into holiday season, which is like nuts that we're there. Uh, this is honestly, these are my favorite weeks leading up to the holidays because there's like so much hustle and bustle and um, my birthday is also early December, so there's a lot of excitement around that time of year. Um, and for the most part, things are good. So if you have any questions, comments, um, want to leave me any ideas for future videos, please let me know in a comment and I will talk to you soon. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Bye.